got a word from the Lord for you. In the second chapter of the book of the Hebrews, you will find enough ammunition to blow up hell. It's time for you to start using what you have. There's no way possible that one devil is supposed to be able to hold you back, make you backslide, make you give up. It's no way possible. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Apostolic people must return to the word of the Lord and I want to share this with you. The apostolic church is known firstly for its preachers. And I'm very concerned with a new generation, not all of them, some of them are excellent. But I'm very concerned with a new generation that has practiced a dance but don't have anything to tell us to dance about. It is very important that you as a generation become hermeneutically straight and homiletically sound in declaring the word of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, would you rise to your feet and honor the reading of the word of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 2, I'm going to begin with verse 1, then I'm skipping to verse 14. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And all the people said, Amen. You may be seated. Your particular attention is requested at the 15th verse. It is upon that textual foundation that the message is built. And deliver them who through fear of death, fear of death, fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Tonight's message, Kings in Slavery. Kings in Slavery. Bow your head and pray with me a moment. Our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we seek a word from you. We are told that you sent your word and healed them. 
we seek a word from you. We are told that when your word came, it was made flesh. We seek a word from you. We are told that all things were created by the word. We seek a word from you. We are told where the word of a king is, there is power. We seek a word from you. Father, speak to us. And we will believe you. And live by your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Kings in slavery. The quality and the power of one's life is in direct proportion to his knowledge of Jesus. The more you know about Jesus, the greater will be your quality of life. The least you know about Jesus puts you in danger of losing your life. So the quality and the power of one's life is in direct proportion to what he knows about Jesus. Now remember what the scripture said. Let not your heart be troubled. The Bible is saying, fret not. Stop worrying. Stop stroking out. Stop taking Salmonex to go to sleep. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. A troubled heart is created by a fearful soul. Wherever there is a troubled heart, there is a fearing spirit. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus Christ says, In my Father's house are many mansions. Now, if we scrutinize the word very closely and look at the text, in my father's house has no reference to heaven. The Bible is very plain on the subject. Jesus said, that the body of the Christos or the Christ was his house. So in my father's house or in Jesus there are many mansions and the Greek word for mansions mean many rooms. Some of us have not gotten out of the basement of Jesus. In the basement of Jesus is where they have the baptismal pool. And that's why they testify every time they get up. I think praise the Lord being here. I did being saved. Thank praise the Lord. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. They have not left the basement. Every now and then we can run into a few basement preachers. who seem to believe there is no other scripture in the Bible but Acts 2.38. 
238. Acts 238 will help you be saved, but Acts 238 will not help you to know how to keep your marriage together. Acts 238 will not be able to help you to overcome daily the test and the temptations of the devil. So what happens, Jesus said, get out of the basement. In my father's house there are many mansions. Touch somebody and tell them I'm going upstairs. There are folk who like to keep you in a basement mentality. Because they have never been on the fifth floor of Jesus. Where they have seen, I'm a hosha, where they have seen the miracles of God in operation. They declare the day of miracles are over. You are dealing with a basement believer. I didn't say they're not saved, but they live in the basement, preach in the basement, sing in the basement, shout in the basement. I don't know about you, but I'm headed for the top floor in Jesus. It is because of the quality of one's life and the power is in direct proportion to what he knows about Jesus. The apostolic church has the responsibility of telling us who Jesus is. This generation must not continue to just talk about the right formula for baptism. And this generation must not spend all of its time arguing with a Trinitarian on formula. The emphasis of this generation must be come and consider Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you see, Jesus is not only the Son of God, but Jesus is the God of the Son. It is actually biblically and apostolicity and in the apostolicity it is incorrect to say that the son was God ladies and gentlemen you see when you say the son is God you have to remember the son died the son got hungry the son ladies and gentlemen was buried one of the prerequisites for being God is that you can never die. We can't say that, oh, oh, the son wasn't really dead when the scripture tells us he was. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the son dies, but God never dies. The son was a hunger, but God never gets hungry. The son was thirsty, but God never gets thirsty. The son sat beside a pool or a well because he was tired and exhausted, but God never becomes. It is a germane fit, a, a point for all apostolic people to understand it is not the son who is God but it is Jesus who became his son who is God it is Jesus who is always God ladies and gentlemen I point out to you that the father the son and the Holy Ghost are manifestations of God but you see the God is actually Jesus Jesus ladies and gentlemen was not simply born of a virgin but Jesus was the God that created the virgin from whom he would be born be very careful that you do not fall into the trap 
that was laid many years ago by our adversaries. We were not the ones to name the apostolic church the Jesus only church. Our adversaries did that. Our adversaries after 1915 said there are those Jesus only people. When a person asks you are you Jesus only before you stick your chest out and say sure I am you must ask them what do you mean because you see you must remember that when a Trinitarian normally says in a negative sense there are those Jesus only people what they are saying is there there goes the people who only believe the son is God and they deny that the father is God and they deny the Holy Ghost is God here is the problem the quality of their life has been impaired because that group of people has only been taught that the son was named Jesus they have not been taught that Jesus the son actually got his name by inheritance from the father so the name of the son is the name of the father and what they haven't understood is that the Holy Ghost is the name of the son who received his name from the father ladies and gentlemen it is Jesus by himself that is God not the son not the father but it's when Jesus who is the father is God and Jesus who is the son who is God and Jesus who is the Holy Ghost what am I telling you before Mary ever named her son Jesus God was already Jesus The significance of what I'm sharing with you is that Jesus is the only sovereign and this generation must learn to preach Jesus. He is the only sovereign. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we say Jesus said, I am the door. Yes. Jesus is the door but the door is not Jesus uh, do you see it God is a door but the door is not God God the door is a manifestation that God chose to be in when he talks about ladies and gentlemen that he is a lamb Jesus is the lamb but the lamb is not Jesus the lamb is only Jesus when Jesus is the lamb but when Jesus is not the lamb then the lamb is not Jesus but on the other hand uh, when Jesus um, is he anything he wants to be uh, the lamb the door the lily of the valley the bright the morning star he is always Jesus uh, he never ceases to be God because God can become anything he wants to be while never ceasing to be who he is when we talk about the sovereignty of Jesus we talk about he who lives beyond question when we talk about the sovereignty of Jesus he lives beyond scrutiny when we talk about the sovereignty of Jesus he lives beyond finite knowledge ladies and gentlemen when I refer to uh, Jesus the sovereign uh, as being God it is he who lives beyond question the Bible said his ways are past finding out you will sit in a service know that a person backslid two months ago and see them singing in a choir rejoicing and the Holy Ghost goes moving on them and you will sit there all puffed up say I don't know how I, I don't know why they up there singing I can't understand that I'm 
just can't understand that because I know what they did. Yeah, baby. The reason you can't understand it is because grace is beyond your knowledge. Mercy is beyond your knowledge. His ways are beyond your knowledge. There's no sense in you pouting on top of the program. The best thing to do is get with it and while they're singing, tell them, go ahead, go ahead. When I speak of the sovereignty of God, I speak of his kingship. For Jesus is identified as the king of kings. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus is called the king of kings, he cannot be referring to the kings of monarchies because they are not his children for the most part. It cannot be, he can't be talking about the kings of other nations because um, many of them are heathenistic. When Jesus said, I'm the king of the kings, remember the Bible said uh, he came to make you a peculiar people uh, and a royal priesthood. And the Bible tells us he came to make you a king. Now, um, you are a king. Uh, I don't care if you're male or female, not kings and queens king shall because see if you just say I'm a queen that means you're always outranked by the male but if you say I'm a king I don't know what you're gonna do with it in the English language but I am a king get it straight and tell somebody next to you I am a king now ladies and gentlemen you are a king Jesus says all right I am the king of the kings so Jesus is the king of each of us who are kings when God created Adam according to the third chapter of the book of Luke Adam was the first human son of God the Bible in the third chapter of Luke says Adam was the son of God now ladies and gentlemen kings are born and not made so the only way you can be a king your father has to be a king you cannot become a king by election you cannot become a king by being made a king you can only become a king by being begotten by a king so when Adam became the son of God Adam became the first king to rule on earth you know what that means sis that means that it was the original plan of God that every human being would be a king that's what that means and that a king would rule not with his fist or with her mind but the Bible said where the word of a king is there is what power you got it power the Bible says that in Ecclesiastes so you are to rule by power now ladies and gentlemen I'm one thing you have to see once a king always a king and the problem is you can become a disinherited king or as Adam you can become a disposed king but you are still a what king you got it though you have been disinherited you are still a what king though you have backslidden you are still a what king though you may have become weak you are still a king yes ladies and gentlemen so Adam was a disposed king and Adam was separated 
from his kingdom stay with me now though Adam was a king Adam could not operate in the kingdom because he was separated from the territory of a kingdom a lot of people think I am weak because I didn't fast and I am weak because I didn't shout hallelujah and I am weak because I didn't read the scriptures and that's why I don't have any power to fight not quite accurate power ladies and gentlemen resides in a place not a person you see it's like rain if you want to get wet in the rain you must go where the rain is raining because rain resides in a place not a person you see ladies and gentlemen the Cincinnati police have great powers but their powers only work in Cincinnati they do not work when they cross the line to Kentucky it is not that they lost their badge or lost their uniform or lost their knowledge what is happening they have lost their place they are out of place when you are trying to fight the devil and say loose here get away from me the Lord rebuke you the devil will look you square in the face and say you in my territory now and your laws do not work in my territory there are too many saints jumping from place to place and when you jump out of your place the devil will kill you if you stay in your place you will live abundantly and some of you messed around with some of the same folk and uh, you didn't even know it uh, but you contracted HIV uh, listen to what I'm about to tell you uh, you got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus now they say that that come home to root, roost in about 10 years well you were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and you were filled with the Holy Ghost you have been walking fine with God ladies and gentlemen God will cover you you will not die somebody hear me when you're in that covering now I didn't mean that if somebody dies of that illness that they were not saved that's not my example my example is that you messed up before you got saved and you lived a wild life you got saved you were baptized in Jesus name you were filled with the Holy Ghost God's power covers you as long as you continue to reside in a place as long as you are in the place but if you ever get out of the place that old thing will metastasize on you oh can you hear what I'm saying I had a man in the church uh, that uh, was doing well and blessed and God carried him on uh, came from a world of sin and degradation like we all uh, but somewhere along the line uh, the man got out of God uh, backslid went away from the church uh, and uh, uh, it had, he had just been out of church maybe 30 days uh, something like that but got wild just wild uh, and I was in my automobile going home and my wife phoned me and said Dr. Perry is calling you from the hospital and he said he desires to talk to you well uh, that was really nothing new I've been blessed of God to have surgeons in Youngstown call me from hear me 
from the chambers around the surgical room. They would be in surgery and run into a problem. They're not even saved. And call me and say, Bishop, we got a problem here. Can you get to God for us and help us get through this dilemma? So I thought maybe it was one of those kinds of cases. And the doctor said to me, uh, Bishop, I called him on my phone uh, while driving. I, he said, Bishop, we've got a serious problem. I said, what is it? Uh, he said, Bishop, he called the man's name. He said, I, I, I just, I, I can't tell you right over the telephone. The doctor was broken up. I said, no problem, doc. I'll turn the car around and I'll be at the hospital uh, quickly. I turned the car around and jetted it to the hospital and went to where the doctor was. And the doctor was nearly in tears. He said, this person is filled with cancer. I said, no, no. He says, I can't understand it. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Bishop, um, this person to be filled with cancer from the crown of their head downward uh, and yet has not lost any weight and yet has not shown any signs and, and he said it was just 60 days ago we gave him a physical we gave him the full uh, uh, MIR we gave him everything and this did not show up glory to heaven uh, he said how could this be uh, I said well doc I hate to tell you this but a lot of us have conditions uh, that uh, are there I said the old saint said it like this that God will keep you from danger seen and unseen so what you're really saying doc was that this man had cancer when he was saved and in the church but it could not affect him then because he was under a mystery covering and he was in his place follow me brothers and sisters so here is what I want you to see yes we buried the man uh, sadly so uh, a few days after that but what I want you to see is that Adam's sin separated him yes from God but more technically it separated him from a place that's the key it is the kingdom brothers and sisters that we want you to dwell in now son when we're telling you that we don't want you to keep listening to all that hip-hop music uh, we didn't actually tell you that the beat was a sin and we didn't tell you that the singer was so filled with sin but what we were attempting to tell you it will draw you from your place and when you get drawn from your place you are on the enemy's territory and you have no protection oh can you hear me today and so brothers and sisters Adam was drawn from his place and the Bible said listen God told Adam the day you eat of it meaning the day you disobey me he said thou shall surely do what tell me again tell me again die ladies and gentlemen the day you do it thou shall surely die well at that time Adam then was separated from the promise of life and became united with the threat of death stay with me Adam never feared death before Adam had never been to a funeral before Adam had never known grief of losing a loved one before Adam had never known failure before because you can't know it as long as you are residing in a place and that is the place of holiness well ladies and gentlemen the Bible said that Adam then entered into death now ladies and gentlemen remember 
he did not die in 24 hours that is because that is called a solar day but the day of the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day Adam would have lived to been way over a thousand but he could not live to be a thousand when God said you will die in the day you will die within the thousand year period so Adam lived every day hear me with the fear of death can you imagine living and wondering will I die today can you imagine living and feeling a headache and say oh do I have a brain tumor am I going to die tomorrow can you imagine uh, knowing you have done something wrong uh, and knowing that the wages of sin is death uh, and wondering is it going to catch up with me today well uh, Adam lived uh, under the fear of death ladies and gentlemen uh, fear uh, is passed on by word you must remember faith cometh by hearing but also fear comes by hearing a baby when he's born he doesn't fear you put a baby on that table the baby will start crawling and he will think he can crawl on air just like the table he doesn't fear falling he ladies and gentlemen has not been taught fear we have to teach the baby oh, 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 oh watch out <laughs> don't go any farther you have to teach fear ladies and gentlemen we have to teach the fear of being burnt on a stove or an oven fear must be spoken in order to become fear now the reason some of you will never become what God wants you to be you are around too many folks speaking fear you will never do the miracles God wants you to do when you are around folk telling you you can't do it get around somebody that say God can do this thing get around somebody that can tell you God's with you get around somebody that says we can do all things through Christ I am not going to be in a boat with 11 fearful disciples if I see Jesus walking water guess what I'm about to become a water walker so ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Adam lived in fear. And when his children were born, he taught them fear. Daddy's going to die one day and mommy's going to die and we're not going to be with you. What's death, daddy? Well, it's going to be the absenteeism of life. And Daddy, what do you mean? Yes, now you got to watch out too because you're going to die too. And they could not imagine ever living a life above fear and their daddy was the greatest man alive and if the greatest man alive was going to die then it meant the rest of us would die but thank God for Jesus the Bible says here that Jesus showed up on the scene now ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters Jesus came and said I've come that you might have what life and that you might have it how more abundantly did you hear that in the balcony he came that you might have I just want the balcony folk to holler to me he came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly thank you go to the head of the class and so brothers and sisters he has come that you might have life ah oh, son it's so important that you understand he didn't say I come that you might go to heaven ah, heaven is a friend's benefit ah, he comes that you might have what life 
He didn't say, I come so I can stop you from drinking and smoking and lying and cheating and stealing. He didn't come for that. He came that you might have. Ladies and gentlemen, he didn't say, I come so you can shake hands with Moses at Go Down Hallelujah Boulevard, at meet St. Peter at Glory Gate. At, oh, brothers and sisters, all that crazy preaching, that's not why he came. He came that you might have, and that you might have it. Oh, clap your hands and praise him. It is important that the apostolic church begins to rehearse with you that you are supposed to live in this present world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are struggling with your mentality about whether or not you are going to heaven. Now, when I boarded that plane this afternoon, uh, uh, in a hurry because of the snow conditions, and I didn't want to disappoint you, uh, so they said at the last minute, you better fly, Bishop. When I boarded that plane, and the woman said, now, uh, this Delta flight is headed for Cincinnati. If that is not your destination, uh, you should uh, disembark the plane. Uh, I fastened my seatbelt and never worried where I was going to end up. When, ladies and gentlemen, I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, when I was just 14 years old, I fastened my seatbelt and I have never worried about whether or not I would end up in heaven. As long as I stay in God, I'm heaven bound. I am so concerned today that uh, you are living in fear. What was the fear? The Bible said, uh, notice the text, uh, the Bible said uh, in that 15th verse, he came to deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. They were in slavery. Fear enslaved them. Uh, but remember, they were actually born not slaves. They were born what? Out loud. Louder. Balcony. Thank you. They were born kings. So they were in slavery, but they were still in Oh, you've got to give yourself a hand. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, you must understand that though you were enslaved because of your father or yourself, you did not lose your king, your kingness. You are still a king. Do you know as young as you are, baby, there is resident in your hand. You stand up right there. Stand up. Yes, ma'am. Just stand up on your feet. Yes, ma'am. You uh -huh. Put your hand out to me. In your hand, there's power to heal that sister next to you. You don't have to pray for the gift of healing. You've got the giver of the gifts. God can operate any time he want to operate. Just lay your hand on her head. Lay your hand on her. That's her. Lay your hand on her. And just repeat after me. Say, in Jesus' name, you be healed. Now, this time, you stop smiling, close your eyes, and you believe it. You all say it with her. In Jesus' name, be healed. Now, give God a hand, please. I can't understand apostolic folk running to meeting after meeting. Oh, you hear what's over this church? You hear what's down here? You hear, oh, come over here. Come on, hurry up. I don't mind you going to churches. I have no law in Mount Calvary about a person not being able to go to church. Help yourself. Hallelujah. I know that I'm serving steak. If you want to go get something else, that's all right. I don't mind. I know that Jesus is steak. Do you hear me? Now, I might not be the best preacher at it, but Jesus, the quality, is there. 
But what I'm sharing with you, when you guys, oh girl, come over here. Oh Lord, we are so free over here. Oh Lord, who used to see this power? Oh Lord, I don't have to see power. Power resides in me. Well, you know, they won't let you do anything in this church. Oh, you know, I got to get the healing. But the pastor never let me have a healing line. You don't need a healing line. If you got to get the healing, just walk in the hospitals and holler, be healed, be healed, be healed. I'll be free. I, I, I can't stay in this church. He never allowed me to preach. I just can't stay here. Oh, how come he won't let me preach? I'm called to preach. The pastor didn't call you. Let him that called you tell you where to preach. You're arguing foolish thing. Somebody said, oh, Bishop, you don't know. Oh, you don't know. I, I grew up under a pastor I was saved under. You didn't go out of town unless you asked him and preach at home. Forget it. That's how we grew up. We grew up with the pastor telling us, go here. And if you act like you got an attitude, when you got back in town, you were silent and didn't even know it. You have to hear what I'm saying now. And so don't tell me I don't understand. When God wants you to take your place, can't any devil in hell or man in the pulpit keep you from doing what God wants you to do? Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. And so they were kings in slavery. The slavery was created by the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, you are kings in slavery. And life's greatest slave masters are, number one, fear. Number two, guilt. Number three, the memory of the past. Number four, poverty. And number five, ignorance. That's what has you in slavery. Fear. I hate fear. Fear. Oh, Jesus. You got to hear what I'm saying. The older you get and you see your friends dying fast, you'll wake up in the morning wondering, am I going to live through the day? Fear. As God blesses you to move from place to place and you receive promotions on your job, you will have more people fighting you for that promotion and they will do everything they can do to kill you, to kill your influence, to kill your respect, and to kill the memory of your work. And so you have to remember when you were on the corner, nobody wanted to fight you. But when you become the heavyweight champion of the world, a man wants to fight you. Mike Tyson lives about five miles from me. And in Mike Tyson's area, you know, a man who fights him and loses can get six to 13 million dollars. I told the saints the other day, uh, for 13 million, uh, I believe I can fight them. Uh, hallelujah. I believe uh, that I could get in the ring. Uh, you 45 seconds, I can dance for 45 seconds. <laughs> Glory to heaven. And uh, on that, uh, on that 45th second, uh, when I see it coming, just the wind will knock me out. <laughs> Didn't say how you lost, the loser gets 13 million. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, hear what I'm telling you. When you become the heavyweight champion among young people, the heavyweight champion as a musician, the heavyweight champion as a preacher, uh, 
hear me everybody wants your crown and so you must grow up and learn there's going to be a fight however when you are the heavyweight champion you determine who fights you the heavyweight champion doesn't let anything fight him somebody tempting you to steal you say no that's no fight get out of here I'm not going to give you a chance to tempt me someone wants you to commit fornication get your ugly self out here pull your dress down and get out my face hallelujah you got to hear what I'm saying you choose what you're going to fight saints have to understand every man is tempted when he is drawn away with his own lust you're not tempted by my lust so if you don't want to lust after it you can tell temptation 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 go away come again some other day hallelujah to god brothers and sisters fear 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 is causing saints to lose their grip with god secondly guilt the devil will keep bringing up something you have confessed years ago and the devil will make you feel like you never confessed it over and over and over guilt the memory of the past you will remember how wrong you did someone and that will haunt you and you will wonder are they going to come back and try to do me vengeance all of this is enslaving you poverty when you're poor that can enslave you and ignorance when you do not know any other rooms that can enslave you but what is the answer to it Jesus said I only can accomplish what is before you look at what the Lord said in verses 14 and 15 Jesus said I come to destroy him that hath the power of death don't you see it I come to destroy him the devil Jesus defeated the devil on the cross secondly he said I come to deliver you who all your lifetime have lived as a slave to fear I come to deliver you from the thing that's not allowing you to sleep at night number three he says I come to be a merciful thank you Jesus and a faithful high priest that means I come to be filled with mercy and I come to keep believing in you though you have let me down for the 1,267,000th time but I still believe in you I still have faith in you so he is a merciful and faithful high priest and the last thing that means intercessor the last thing he came he said I come to reconcile you back to God that's why the Lord has come to reconcile us back to God will the apostolic church please remember that I know you're hearing about all these five ministries and five four that's great but God only gave the church one ministry and that is the ministry of reconciliation it is your job to be a specialist on reconciling erring men and women to God it's not your call to judge to reconcile you are to be a specialist when everybody else says they're too far gone you need to say let me have a work at it hallelujah when somebody else says there's no way to retrieve her 
Somebody has got to say, I haven't had my chance with her yet. When the devil is saying, there's no way to bring you up out of what the devil has put you in. You need to let God begin to have his way. And so, ladies and gentlemen, God said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now, how do you do it? He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. But now, how do we lift him up? The Bible said, I'm not interested in you lifting me up by singing and just preaching and shouting and you dancing. He said, do it like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. What was that? God said to Moses, when the children were dying, wives were running saying, Moses, my husband, has been bit by a snake and he's dying. Fathers were carrying their children and they said, Moses, my little baby was at home and a snake came out of the pillowcase and bit my baby. Another one came and said, Moses, I was on the battlefield and I don't know how it happened, but a snake came and bit me. Jesus, the Jehovah, the Almighty God, Moses went to him and said, Lord, what do we do? God said, make a brazen serpent. Let it be a sign that something's dying for it. Let it be a sign that the very thing that has cursed them has now been cursed. He said, and then take that into the camp where men and women are dying and lift it up and tell every one of them, look and live. If they're on their last dying hour, grab their face and point it to the brazen serpent. If they got to bow down ahead, you got to lift it up. So what the Lord is saying, to liberate slaves, we've got to point them to the cross and tell them, Jesus died for you that you might have life and Jesus claim that you might have it more abundantly and Jesus begin to operate that you might know who he is and how to have the anointing and the spirit of God on your life so brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen what God is saying to you today get out of slavery God has delivered you the blood of Jesus has sanctified you oh clap your hand and praise him when you begin to comprehend today that what God wants you to do at this hour is just to be a believer so what do we have here ladies and gentlemen Jesus said I've come to deliver you who all your lifetime have been afraid that your sins were going to catch up with you they can't catch up with you they have been buried in the name of Jesus they have been confessed before the Lord so God is sharing with you start operating in your kingness and start operating in your authority now it's deliverance time tell your neighbor next to you I'm getting out of this mess oh you didn't say it like you believe it you gotta tell him I'm getting out of this mess hallelujah you gotta tell them that I'm about to leave here there's a greater call on my life I know that I have 
come short and I know that my father fell and I know that I've been heavily discouraged but I heard the preacher tell me I'm still a king and there's a resident in me power oh yeah hallelujah they brought a boy to me a young man that was deaf had been in an accident and the doctor said it has injured that audio nerve and his grandmother said just get him to church they brought in a sinner boy and the young man came I wrote on the board do you believe God he said yes sir I said do you believe God will heal you he said yes sir I wrote on that board have faith in God we laid our hands on him and God said tell him in seven days I'll open his ears I wrote on the board your miracle will come seven days from now on the sixth day the saints and the unbelievers somebody said that five days have gone and he hasn't heard another said six days but the saints that had been in Calvary a while they said just wait on the seventh day we've been with Bishop a long time we have never heard a thing God say not come to pass on the seventh day the young man was walking around and all at once God said pop and his ears open you have the same kind of power oh yeah you've got to believe what God is sharing with you you got the same kind of power just the other day a woman one of our deacons wives was smitten with a stroke and it was devastating where it left her paralyzed and unable to receive anything orally but I remembered we're kings I was out of town like tonight and I flew in Saturday a Sunday morning and they were helping me put my robe on I said how's mother they said no good Bishop I said to them well let's see what God said I walked in the pulpit and in the middle of the message God said I want to touch mother now I stopped preaching and said God wants to touch mother I need seven believers they rushed up to the altar I called another person I said you get down and proxy for her we began to pray and while we were praying God said to me you're praying for the wrong thing he said the power the problem rather is on the left side of her brain and you have to enter into the left side and operate I know folk don't believe it but I've been doing it for 20 years hallelujah I called for the saints and said let's operate I said God said it's on the left side of the brain we started praying in the spirit the doctor said she wouldn't live the day out we prayed in the spirit at two o'clock Sunday afternoon we received a call and they said Bishop guess what happened I said I already know mother is out of the coma and she told the doctor I want something to drink he says you can't drink you will kill yourself trying to drink she said just give me a glass of water and watch me die hallelujah to God that woman drank that water and lived and walked out of the hospital you are a king oh give God some praise here you are a king hallelujah I'll tell you one more I was in my office and 
the ministers were making hospital visitations and they called me and said that one of the saints mother is in the hospital I said which one the one with Alzheimer's yes but they said Bishop she's in a coma and the doctor said that the life supporting system is keeping her alive she's already brain dead and they want to withdraw the life supporting system I said what's the family saying they said they won't do anything till they hear from their pastor I said I won't do anything till I hear from God oh yeah and so I turned to God and said, what say it you about this case? And I didn't get an answer. The phone rang back and they said, Bishop, they want an answer right now. They want to take it all. I said, tell the doctor, don't touch anything. God is busy right now. I don't know if he's at Mars, Venus, or if he's at Saturn, but I haven't reached him yet. Tell him to hold on. Now the doctor, who knows Bishop Wagner, he said, well, we didn't see him before, so we better wait here. Finally, they said, we need this bed. We've got to pull it. They said, Bishop, I said, yes, I just got an answer from God. And God told me to tell the doctor, wait until morning. The doctor said, Reverend, she's brain dead. I said, I understand, sir, and I'm not challenging you. But God said, wait until morning. The doctor said, in respect to you, sir, we will wait till morning. But that will be the end. I said, that's good enough for me. In the morning, oh yeah, in the morning, in the morning, they walked into the hospital and mother opened her eyes for the first time and began to motion, trying, they said she's not paralyzed any longer, she started motioning, they began to get the step out of the mouth and started removing the tubes and the daughter who is saved mother's not saved the daughter who is saved said mother we thought you were dead mama said ain't nothing wrong with me get me something to eat hallelujah to god they released her in three days from that hospital now i know what i'm telling you do i have just about a hundred of you who believe in miracles do i have somebody that want to work him with god is there anybody here who's tired of being a slave is there anybody here who's tired of being afraid is there anybody here who's tired of being in the back is there anybody here who really believes god oh yeah if you believe god i want you to tell somebody i'm going to the next floor hallelujah hallelujah tell somebody behind you in front of you i'm going to the next floor hallelujah tell the devil i'm going to the next floor hallelujah tell him i gotta believe god and i must obey him and i've got to be used by him the first thing you got to do to go to the next floor the prison door is already open where you've been a slave leave your fear leave your guilt leave your memory of the past leave your poverty and leave your ignorance oh yeah i want you to help me preach tell somebody i'm about to step out hallelujah i want you to tell them it was good to know you but i'm about to change and become another person that 
over your mess. I want you just to tell the Lord, I come. Oh, yeah. I come. I want all of you to be just for a moment like the Baptist preacher who didn't have monitors. And when he didn't have a monitor, he made one out of his hand to hear himself preaching. And I want you to grab your ear and say, Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I want you to tell him, I come. Oh, clap your hand and praise God. Hallelujah. 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 It's time to get up. It's time to get out. Oh, yeah. Is there anybody that want out of prison? Is there anybody that want to leave your past? Is there anybody that want to leave your fear? Well, on three, I want you to say, I'm out of here. One, two, three. I'm out of here. This time, this time, oh yeah, we're going to do it one more time. On three, I want you to say I'm out of here and then point your hands like Superman and jump as high as you can. One, two, three, I'm out of here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God wants you to move to the next level. God wants you to believe God. God wants you to have faith in Him. God, God wants you to be used. You are God's king. You are God's anointed. You are God's blessing. Oh, clap your head and breathe. Hallelujah. 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 The first thing you have to do uh, on this level, uh, we all worship on this level. Uh, everybody that gets up here, uh, has to be a worshiper. Just start clapping and shouting, praise God, thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Come on, come on. Let God get a hold to you. Let God liberate you. Let God free you. Let God use you. Let God speak to you. Let God remind you. I know. I really know I want to use you. I really know I want to use you. So I really know he wants to use you. Kings, you've been enslaved too long. You've been enslaved too long. You have to hear me. You cannot answer your critics and answer the call of God at the same time. You have to make up your mind which one you're going to answer. If you're going to keep dealing with critics, you will never answer the call of Zion. The critics you will have with you always. Leave folk alone when they say, I don't know how God using you. Tell them I don't understand it either. Hallelujah. There'll be some things you'll never understand. When somebody tell you 
you are not worthy for God to use. Look them in the eye and tell them I was thinking the same thing. I'm not worthy. Hallelujah. God, I wish I had somebody that could praise me. I wish I had somebody that knew how to praise me. same level just tell them excuse me let me out this pew so I can dance and let God know I'm free I refuse to stay where I was your name. 